comedian that boil and I'm quitting alcohol. So I can see it already. The Trump effect has come to the streets of Australia. He's not even president yet. And you can tell the climate has changed. I saw it. It was me. I was the exponent of the Trump effect. And all the Trump effect is, is now that Trump's going to be president again, the veneer of civilization has been torn off and it's just a free for all now. That's the Trump effect. (laughs) I'm not even joking, but I was the one who perpetrated it. So I saw it, but it was POV, me. So I was driving down a side street and a fucking cyclist, this little skinny rat little cyclist, like a proper cyclist, not like a kid cyclist, like one of those cunts dressed up. He's riding down the center of the road, this fucking side road, not even pedaling hard, just casually just strolling down the fucking middle of the road. I drive up behind him. I'm like expecting him to at least make an effort to move to the side. He doesn't. He just continues just casually fucking pedaling along. So I get right up behind him and I'm like, fucking get the fuck out of my way. I'm giving the engine a bit of a rev. I'm chucking the clutch in and just giving it a rev like fucking you can hear me now move. And he doesn't do anything. He just keeps on fucking pedaling down the center, down the fucking center of the road. And then he sticks his arm out to turn right just casually. And then he looks behind and sees me. And he says something. He turns and looks straight at me and yells something like, fuck you, you fucking cunt, shakes his head. He's all pissed off. He turns down the side road and then I pull up and I'm like, I have to do something. What would Trump do here? What would Trump do? And so I wound down the window and I'm like, suck my dick, faggot. I think I actually said, suck my fucking dick, faggot, at the top of my lungs. And I was like, Trump would have been proud with that, to be honest. He would have seen that and gone, well done. Join my cabinet. You can be the head of human rights. (laughs) I haven't done that in years or months. Just a good old fashioned suck my dick, faggot, out the window. That's the new paradigm we're living in. You can do that now. I don't encourage it, but like, what other choices do I have? I really only had two options. It was either wind down my window and say that, or slam on the brakes, reverse, go back down the street he turned down, and just run him over with the car. They were the only two options available to me at the time. And I'll explain that to the police. I'm like, I only had two options and they'll be like well you could have ignored him and just continued home the way you were going and I would be like I would present as evidence the shirt he was wearing I was like well he was riding down the center of the back street wearing this shirt exhibit a I'd like the jury to see exhibit a And you would see his shirt and you would have been like, I don't see any other option. Like, I don't think he had any other option. If he was wearing a different shirt, maybe he could have done something else. But in that shirt, it was either run him over or call him a faggot. That's all. That's all he had. And so I chose... (laughs) I chose... The one that was going to get me in less trouble. Anyway, that's what the Trump effect does. The veneer of civilization has been torn down. We're living in the fucking shadow. The Jungian shadow now. We are down in the depths of it. You'll see it. It will start coming out soon. The sh- Everyone's shadow will be right out there in the open. Anyway, it's fucking Monday. And you know what that means. It's... 
Podcast Boil time. So if you have a question you would like answered by one of the greatest minds of the generation or any generation, comedian, philosopher, crane operator, waterproofer, soon-to-be political scientist, Le Boyal, then head to my website, boilcomedy.com. Put in a question, but also while you're there, fucking smoke a doob, have a beer. Well, maybe not have a beer. Do a line of coke, do something, and send me some fucked up Friday stories. Get them in, people. We need them. It's fucked up Friday, red alert. So get them in while you're there. Join the Patreon. I'm coming to the end of this work bullshit. I'm going away to India in December, so fucking get on board. It's all going to be happening again. And yeah, mainly just get in the fucked up Friday stories. Anyway, let's get to this week's Ask Boil. So this week's Ask Boil was sent in through the Patreon. One of the Degenies sent this in, Laura. She wants to know... Would you pay for your wife to get fake boobs? This is after you paid off your texting while driving fines. Well, (laughs) McCurdy, you have come to the right place. For starters, how much is a fucking boob job? How much does it cost per cup? How many sizes? Like, is it 10 grand a size or something? Like, if you're going from fully flat-chested to a handful, like, how much would that cost? Or how much would a handful to, like, a watermelon cost? And is that a day surgery? How long's the recovery on that? That's the economics behind it. I'm not too sure what the economics are. Let's just say the economics on a tit job, like, if you're getting it in Australia or somewhere, let's say it's $10,000. It's probably $10,000, isn't it? That's about how much IVF is. They're pretty much the same thing, tit job, IVF. So let's say 10 k for a tit job. That's, at the moment, that's still 0.1 of a Bitcoin. So fucking, like if I bought a Bitcoin or just spent the $10,000 on Bitcoin and held it, like, let's say I held it for four or five years or something like that, 10 years. That's probably when it would be necessary anyway. Let's say 10 years. Now, that $10,000 is probably something like fifty dollars or $60,000. And now I'm looking at a big set of titties, aren't I? Instead of just going up the one cup, now we're going to the, like, the size of my head. That's investment. That's, that's economics. That's what Bitcoin can do for you. Just increase the titty size. Uh, (laughs) Would I? No, I don't give a fuck about that shit. I wouldn't even fucking pay for a fucking nail polish. I don't like any of that shit. I don't like the fucking Botox. I don't like the lip injections. I don't like any makeup. (laughs) Like, I just like El Natural. My wife wears no makeup. I'm thinking of buying her a burqa. As well, just to <laughs> just to let everyone know it's under control. No, she doesn't wear makeup. She wears like a little bit of eyeliner and a little bit of lipstick occasionally. But not much going on. I'm fine with that. Any enhancements? Plus, like, look, I've felt a couple of uh, fake titties in my day and i was never impressed i was always like what the fuck is this inside a tit what is this fake firmness i actually um <laughs> i actually felt them once on a um quite a large girl if i uh can put it that way we're in trump's world she was a fatty we're in the new age the veneer's been ripped down she was a fatty a Brazilian fatty, and I think Brazilian, <laughs> I think Brazilians uh, get a lot of boob boob jobs. And I was like, for starters, I was like, you didn't need a boob job. And then I was like, it's it feels a little bit like having a rock in your shoe. 
I'm like, where is it? Like, what's this thing in the middle? What's this hard thing in the middle? That was one experience. And then, obviously, there's been others and they haven't been like, uh, and none of them have been great experiences. I was never like, wow, this is fucking amazing. Apparently, some people <laughs> like it. I don't know. Not for me. Just give me two saggy bags. I don't give a shit. Give me some Papua New Guinea fucking tribal titty. You don't have to inflate them. You don't have to fucking blow them up for me. So no, I wouldn't be buying any fake titties for anyone. Who gives a shit? That's not even like important anyway. Titties are important when you're like 14. Get over it. Grow up. It's ass and puss after 14. Fucking titties. So childish. Anyway, Laura, I hope that answers your question. It actually reminds me of, I don't want to fucking burn his joke, but I will. <laughs> this Australian comedian, Mick Nevin, he had this joke about uh, girls getting their labia surgery or something, like their pussy reconstruction. And... He was like, ladies, if a guy's turning you down for that, then he's not worth being with. And then he was like, back in the day, I was doing all right with the ladies. I was never doing well enough to knock any back, though. (laughs) It was always a yes, no matter what. You know what I mean? Anyway, I butchered that joke. Go see him live, Mick Nevin. Anyway, that'll fucking do for tonight, and I'll see you the fuck later.